Let's take a look at configuring LDAP for OpenStack using Triple O. So the same steps that we'll look at here will also apply to Red Hat OpenStack platform as well. But since we're using Triple O, we'll be using the upstream documentation. So this link here, and it will be in the description below as well. So in this environment, we're using a free IPA server, which is this one here, and we've created a group called OpenStack, and we're going to we, we'll, we want to add users to that group that we want to allow access to OpenStack. So that will be our group. And we've also enabled LDAP on OpenShift and that used a different group. So if you haven't seen my video on doing it in OpenShift, you can compare the differences here with that video. So one thing I didn't do there was I didn't add a blind user. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that differently here. So let's add a new user and we'll call it Keystone. I'll just call it Keystone and Service Account. And we'll just give it a password of Test Password. There you go, so we've added the Keystone user. And we want the Keystone user to be a member of the OpenStack group. So we will add a new member, Keystone, to this group. So now, if we flick over to our terminal. So here we want to do an LDAP search. We want to verify that that account that we just set up is actually able to query users. So we'll do LDAP search. We point it to the base domain of bnehome.net, our LDAP server here. Then we're going to give it dash D and this is going to be the bind DN. So we're going to use the UID of Keystone in the users group and it's going to ask me for the password and we're going to use this filter. So we're going to be looking for users that are members members of the OpenStack group that we've created. So now it prompts us for our password. The password is just test password like we just set up. And we can see there that we are now able to query all the accounts that are members of that OpenStack domain. So if we go up a little. We should be able to see that we have my account and we have an administrator account in there. So that, that's great, that's exactly what we want to use. So once we're able to query with LDAP search and we have figured out our, our search filter, so that's the end one here. Now this might take some, some playing with to get it right, but for us we just want members of this OpenStack group. So from there, we'll go to our director node again and we want to just create a new file so in this case I've created one called beginning home LDAP config and in there we're just taking the bits and pieces that are in the documentation so if you scroll all the way down there's a section on free IPA as an LDAP backend and this is the section that I'm using so that's what they've done there is that first step is they've added the keystone user we just did that from the web UI and now we're copying over this, this section and we're just editing it to make it our own. So the URL, again, we're just querying that, that same LDAP server. The user we're going to use is Keystone that we just added. We use Keystone with the test password as our password. The suffix being near home and that should be net. The user tree, we are just using users accounts being near home net. The user filter though, we're looking for members of the OpenStack group. And the rest of it, we're just mapping objects to various components that are returned from LDAP. Uh, the group tree, we're just giving it the, the base group tree. And everything else I've left as default there, I haven't changed anything else. So once we've got that, we'll go ahead and we can run a overcloud deployment. So just to show you that deploy script. We've just added that environment file to our deploy command. Down here at the bottom, we can see it there. So once we've done that, we can we can run that deployment. And also, it's good to just add that to our, our Git repository as well. So I've, I've created a new branch while I do this work, as a lot of you have seen in the previous videos. So we'll push these changes to that branch and assuming everything is successful, then we'll merge that branch with master. 
So now we can do bash deploy and then deploy. Now I've gone ahead and done that prior to filming this so that we didn't have to wait for this whole deployment. So what we need to do next is we need to we need to add our admin account to that domain. So in the post deployment setup section of the guide, there is a handy command. So we can just copy this. So we just want to edit this a little bit and we want to change this to the name of our domain that we've set up. So that's the name of the domain we've set up. And we get that from So we get that from this line here. This is this will be the the name of the domain that is configured in our OpenStack projects, and that will be where all the users come under. So when you go to Horizon, you will type that in the domain section, and you will log in with users under that domain. So if we go back to our command, that's the domain we want to do a show on because that's going to have been created by our, by our OverCloud deployment, and we're just going to add our admin user to that domain. So we paste that in. So the next thing we want to do after that, we just do an OpenStack project list, OpenStack user list, and we can list the users for our domain. Okay, so we've got our service account that was set up, we've got my default account, and we've got this administrator account. So what we want to do is we want to add this administrator account to our project. So we do OpenStack role add project, and the project will be this one. This is our BE Home Infra, it's the one I want to give all of my users in that domain access to. And we do user. So this administrator user, and I want to add it as an admin role. I've already done that, so it might give me an error saying that already exists. Nope. Okay, so once that's been done, we can go over to Horizon. So we want to log in as the administrator user and we'll give it the password as defined in free IPA and we've just set the domain down here to bne-home.net and there we go we can see we are now logged in as the administrator user and we should be able to see all of the instances that are running here and we should have full access since we were added as the admin as we added the administrator to the admin role so there we go, we've got all of our VMs that are running, we can see everything, so that, that's great. So what actually happened on the overcloud side though? So if we go to our controller, I'm going to go to varlib config data, puppet generated, keystone, etc keystone. Now under here we have our default config file, but importantly we've got this domains. So in domains we can see we have this file that's called keystone.bne-home.net.conf and if we open that one we can see we have all of the things that we just entered into our triple O heat templates here. So we have the UID that it's, it's using as the bind user as keystone with this test password and everything else that we've configured. So if you were having any trouble and you needed to troubleshoot that, I've just showed that it works, but in some cases it might not work. So what you'd want to do is just tlf var log containers keystone keystone.log and then go and try and log in. So if I log in on another window with a user that doesn't exist, this doesn't exist and whatever password. So we can see there that we get this error that says could not find the user, this doesn't exist. So that gives me a good indication of, of what might be going wrong there. That user just doesn't exist in free IPA, so we were unable to find it. But if that wasn't quite enough details, what we could do is we can enable debug in the keystone.conf file. So we go back a directory in vi keystone.conf. 
to a search and debug. So we have debug is equal to false. We'll set that to true. And then we just want to restart the Keystone service. Once that has been restarted, we can tail-left that file again. Now we have a lot more information here. And we'll wait for it to calm down and then we will try and log in again. Okay, looks, looks like it's calmed down, so we'll try and log in again. And we, we saw there that it didn't work. So let's go back and find that error. So this doesn't exist. So we can see here that it's actually given us the LDAP search parameters that it used. So it used the base of users accounts being your home net, scope with filters, SN, this doesn't exist, object person, UID. So we could take this, use it as an LDAP search command ourselves and try and replicate that to see if we can further diagnose that error. In this case, we just know that user doesn't exist, so it's quite simple, but if you needed some extra help in debugging this, there should be enough details in the debug logs of Keystone to help understand what's going wrong and how you can further understand that. For example, you can see the bind account. So there's the bind account that we're using. Um, then we can see it's trying to connect to our LDAP server. It's using this LDAP search string that when we could take into an LDAP search command ourselves. So just a really quick video and we'll just do a quick recap. So in our templates, we create a new YAML file that has all the information that we've just copied from our documentation. We just want to make sure that we have a bind user. So we created a new user in free IPA back over here. And see it was this Keystone user and we can then manage and update the account and credentials and all that from here. We could lock the account if we wanted to. Then we went and added that in with the password to our Keystone LDAP backend configs. We need a suffix, so that is going to be what our domain is called. In my case, it's bneheim.net, so we translate that into dc equals bne-home, comma dc equals net, so we're just replacing the dots with dc equals. We want to give it a user tree DM, which in this case I'm just using the default user tree DM, but I gave it a different user filter to make sure that all of my users are members of that OpenStack group. The user attribute we're using is just the UID and then everything else in this file has been left from the defaults from what we get from the documentation. So quite simple to set up. The longest part of this is just running that overcloud deployment which we can see for me is actually still running. So this is going to take some time now to complete but once it's complete that's the outcome of it that we just looked at. It creates that file and you can then go into that file and double check that all of your parameters are correct. And if you need to further debug, just enabling debug in the keystone.com file and restarting the triple O underscore keystone systemd service. So hopefully that clears up any kind of confusion there might be around LDAP. I know it can be quite an intimidating kind of thing working out those search strings and those filters. So I hope giving you practical examples that you can see work help to complement what we have in the documentation and they make that easy to understand. But of course, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take those in the comments.